We begin with breaking news. Two people recovering after a small plane crashed in a Northwest Houston neighborhood. One of those people had to be cut from the wreckage in front of someone's home. Our reporter Courtney Fisher live now on Boulder Oaks in the Bear Creek neighborhood. Courtney, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Tom. It, now that it's light out, you can really get a sense of how close this plane landed to houses in this neighborhood. About 20, 25 feet from the house behind it. Look at that plane sitting right there. I want to show you, walk you through the path investigators say it took. It dropped 7,000 feet from the air and it landed at the top of this tree, it took down some branches, and then investigators believe it just sort of landed softly on the ground. I say softly because again, the pilot survived, his passenger survived. The pilot, 40 years old, had a head injury. He actually had to be cut out of this plane. His passenger walked out, only suffering a broken wrist. He is 33 years old. Look at that, the two wings just sheared off the way it landed. We talked to the woman who lives in the house right behind where this plane landed. I want to show you some video. You can see she was one of the first people to come out here and try and help these people. Called 911 as paramedics arrived. They obviously took them away to Memorial Hermann where they are recovering this morning. Listen to what Frida Rodriguez told us she saw. So I thought it was actually a thunder until my mom comes like running out her room. She's like the truck. Because we're always parked right there, so she automatically thought somebody had hit the truck. And then so she comes out, and I come out running behind her, and it was really dark because they actually, they like took off the light from the thing, so we couldn't really see. And then my mom, like, I turned on my flashlight, and then we see it was a whole plane, so it was just crazy. And the pilot was conscious when he was rescued and he told DPS troopers that he lost power in the air. The plane then stalled and that's when it dropped 7,000 feet. We know they were headed to Sugarland Airport. It's not clear exactly where they were coming from when they crashed at 1.30 this morning. But again, that plane right behind me just narrowly missing houses. And then there's also this red truck in the street right next to it. Unreal that the plane landed just right here on the ground in front of us. For now, reporting live in Northwest Harris County, Courtney Fisher, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Wow, close call there. All right, now to the struggle with deputies that led to three of them being injured this morning along the East Tex Freeway by a man they were trying to arrest. He was resisting arrest and one of the deputies called for help. A second unit arrived on the scene, but there was a crash between two of those responding deputies. And again, one of them suffered a broken hand. The other two had minor injuries, all taken to the hospital, but no one seriously hurt. Doctors across the country say it appears new cases of COVID-19 may be starting to level off a bit. Last week, new cases increased 0.1%. However, that same period saw an increase of 21% in COVID-19 deaths. Doctors believe the cases are a result of a surge in June and July. So far, more than 148,000 people in the U.S. have died from the virus. And an internal FEMA memo obtained by ABC News shows just how in demand I ICU beds are across Texas. As of July 22nd, none were available in Galveston. Five were available in Laredo, 16 in Corpus Christi, and 50 in the Rio Grande Valley. This morning, fireworks are expected on Capitol Hill as U.S. Attorney General William Barr will testify for the first time before congressional Democrats. In his opening statements released yesterday, it appears Barr will go after Democrats who he says are trying to, quote, discredit him. Democrats allege Barr has committed numerous abuses of power, including intervening in the prosecution of two of President Trump's allies, also ousting a prominent U.S. attorney and supposedly making threats to state and local officials over their handling of the coronavirus. Today, the man accused of beating his two-year-old son to death will face a judge. Investigators say 21-year-old Anthony Hicks Sr. lost his temper as he tried to potty train the toddler and hit him a number of times. That baby, known as Baby K, was unresponsive when they took him to the hospital, but the cause of death hasn't been released. The father is charged with seriously bodily injury. Those charges could be upgraded to murder following an autopsy, and we'll let you know what happens today in court. Well, new this morning, KDISD is asking parents for their opinions about the district's newest junior high school, Junior High Number 17. It's set to be completed in August of 2021. It will be near Clay Road and Katie Hockley Road. It will provide much relief to other schools, but could change attendance boundaries. Beginning today, parents will receive an email survey asking for their feedback. 
final attendance boundary modifications should be made in October. All right, let's check with Rachel on the forecast for this Tuesday. Rachel? Well, it's definitely going to be a warm one as we head into the afternoon. High temperatures today look to top out in the low 90s, and our feels like temperatures should actually be up closer to 100 degrees. So we could definitely use a few cooling downpours, and we may see that as we head into the rest of the day today. Now, starting off this morning, we're already starting to see a few showers popping up closer to the coast. Going to continue to see that heading into the, I would say, mid to late morning. Then as we head into the afternoon, could see a few more more scattered storms pop up and any of those storms could drop some quick heavy rainfall, possibly between one to two inches of rain. Also could be looking at the potential for some lightning and also for some small hail. It cannot be ruled out. So scattered showers and storms possible through at least the late afternoon to early evening hours. But once the sun starts to go down, we'll start to see that rain chance start to go down as well. So today looking at about a 60% chance of rain. Wednesday still want to keep the umbrella around 40% chance. We start to dry out a bit heading into the end of the week but we start to see those rain chances go up slightly heading into this weekend. And the reason for that is because we're expecting a front to start rolling towards us heading into the weekend. And now, are we necessarily going to feel any major impacts in terms of temperature? No, we're actually not going to drop in terms of temperature at all, but we are expecting some showers and storms to form along this frontal boundary. So that's going to bring up our rain chance to a 30% chance on Saturday and Sunday. Other than that, this week, looking at some very warm temperatures, looks like we will stay in the 90s throughout the rest of this week. We do have a rain chance in place through at least Sunday or into next Monday, but it looks like we will dry out that next following week. All right, and that's all the time we have for the news this morning. I hope you have a great Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Join us on ABC13.com as well as our news app.